Hey everybody, this is Rustin with Metal Holic, and with us today, of course, we have the mad talent of Bjorn Alexander Bram from Goth Minister. How are you doing? Hey man, I'm fine, thank you. It's uh, awesome to get a chance to talk to you. I was just sitting here thinking, it's weird, doing what I do, that a band like Goth Minister could be around for 10 years, and it's still a new discovery for me, so I'm sort of excited that it, it took this many albums, but <laughs> suddenly there you are, it's like new candy for the years. Well, that's cool, I think. Uh, we have uh, changed a bit during the years, too, so I don't think it's that strange. No, and it'll be cool now to actually get a chance to go back and check everything out. But over here in America, we know very little about Goth Minister, obviously. So before we talk about the new album, Utopia, can you sort of encapsulate the backstory of the band for us? Yeah, well, uh, we started out in... Well, I started out, actually, alone in, in 1999 after... Uh, several other bands if we go back to like 1987 i think i started playing in the band this, this is the the start for me like musical wise and uh, i played in a lot of uh, trash metal bands and different stuff we even did some grunge things i think but uh, our last uh, band before got minister was a band called disco judas Funny name, but uh, we played uh, like industrial metal, very inspired by bands like Neurosis and stuff like that. So, but uh, we were four guys and we all wanted in different directions, musical wise. So we split up and I started Goth Minister. Um, that was in 1999, and I didn't have a band back then. So obviously, I started with some electronic stuff, which developed later to more rock metal oriented stuff. So. Right, well, because you started off playing keyboards, am I correct? Not really, actually. I started off, well, yeah, you, you're probably right that I started with keyboards, but I also played guitar at the same time. Actually, back in 87, I had this band, and I played keyboards. I played bass guitar and guitars, and then I played the drums for 10 years. So drums w was actually my main instrument before oh, wow. Goth Minister. Multi-instrumentalist on top of all of that. So... Now, you guys have sort of combined, as everybody knows, gothic industrial elements with the heavy guitars, you know, hard rock and metal. What drew you to that style? Uh, well, I had, uh, I, I had, I was, this is a weird story because when I was younger, I, and now we're talking like eight years old or something, I think, I, I started playing tennis because my, my grandfather was a Norwegian champion 46 times. Oh, wow. So it was natural for him to introduce me to that sport, and I, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents because my mother was studying and shit, so uh, she didn't have so much time. So uh, at the local tennis club, I didn't have anyone to play with, so obviously I played with my grandmother, and then there was another boy who was a bit older than me. He played with his father, and we started playing some tennis together, and this guy was really into metal. He was... Um, quite trashy actually he had this uh, mohawk and the moped and you know listening to accept and <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's quite uh, trash metal uh, so he introduced me to to metal and uh, to horror movies actually because he was a great fan of horror movies uh, and of course he was a bit older and you know you look up to guys a bit older at that age so right so he uh, came to my house with um, some old VHS copies, like they were only black and white, and he brought uh, films like Evil Dead, uh, Halloween, and uh, Prince of Darkness, which obviously quickly became my favorites because they were the first ones I saw. And uh, I also watched a lot of, you know, uh, Deadly Ernest Horror Show that was B or C movies uh, at Sky, on Sky Channel in the 80s. So this was my kind of introduction to to metal and horror, I think. Nice, which you guys have combined quite well. I mean, at the outset, a lot of people are going to see visual images of Ramstein, Alice Cooper, Marilyn Manson, Kiss, stuff like that. And you guys have always been a theatrical band, but it really seems you've amped that up with the Utopia release. Yeah, was actually the newest guitar player who kind of pushed me to focus on the on especially on the live show. And the wishes again because we had a lot of that before. Then we stripped it a bit down for a couple of years, and then we really just went nuts <laughs> with this. So um, I don't know. I don't know if you have seen the the new DVD or or 
just maybe some clips on on YouTube or something from the new stuff. But uh, I'm I'm a bit unsure what the record label sent out. If they only sent out a CD or the DVD as well, but. Well, they say, I've, I've seen a few clips. I have the DVD. They sent it. I'm just not sure yeah. if it will work on an American machine yet. I'm going to try it later today. But And I want to talk about the film and everything. But of the clips that I've seen, yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw all this. Because I grew up on Kiss here in America, which is okay, yeah. theatrical and stuff. But, you know, and Marilyn Manson and Alice Cooper have done a lot of that <coughs> stuff, too. And just in watching the clips, I saw some of that, you know, the characters on stage, which reminds me of Cooper and Rob Zombie these days, and the flames and all that stuff, which Kiss, Rob yeah, Stein, cool. and all that yeah. good stuff. And it's just really cool to see bands still doing that. And, and But one of the things I was going to, I th- immediately thought was, wow. Cause, and we're going to talk about the new album and the movie and all that stuff in a minute, but... You guys invested so much, not just time and energy, but money into this in a yeah. bad economy, in a music yeah. industry that's floundering. That is some serious, that's a bold step and some serious dedication. It's cool that you mentioned Alice Cooper because he's a huge inspiration, of course, among others and other things than other bands as well. But uh, I remember um, reading about him because I was only like one year then. Uh, in, in 1975, I read an, uh, something about Alice Cooper, you know, when he wanted to invest all the money they earned into this concept album, Welcome to My Nightmare, and started building up huge stage shows. And some of the guys in the band, they wanted just to take the profits and quit the band. <laughs> and uh, I kind of thought back on that, that I read about that, and this is kind of also an inspiration. So I took up a huge loan and just invested a lot and uh, not only like you say time and effort but also a lot of money in it because i'm thinking that uh, we have a short life and we just have to try to do whatever we want to do and try to i mean if you don't uh, guts you if you if you just just go for it and then well let's see how it goes you have to stand out in some some way absolutely and it's and it's absolutely amazing just what i've seen and and i'm looking forward to seeing the movie and praying that it's going to play on my player but Tell us first. They, they actually, they actually, tried, they actually did. Um, we had to uh, change the format, convert the format from uh, PAL to NTSC. Actually, to, just because it was supposed to work everywhere. <laughs> so actually, the the quality was a bit lower. I think they say, but it's just a different uh, vibe. Actually, I think it looks good still. But the record company wanted to have NSTC to. Um, to make it play everywhere, so I hope it. Would yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping too. I uh, so, and that's something I'm looking forward to doing a little bit later this afternoon. So, but first, tell us about Utopia from a musical standpoint relative yep. to the band's previous efforts. Well, I think, uh, as I said, I started off. Uh, you know, early days it was just, just me and um, electronic music, and uh, I had live. I had one microphone stand. I had my chorus paint. A top hat, a long black frock, and um, a, a video screen. So it was just me and the lights guy, uh, and that was it. And then, of course, since I come from a band environment, I quickly found some musicians and we built a band. So the first album, 2003, Gothic Electronic Anthems, is more electronic but with guitars, but with drum machine. Then we started recording live drums on the second album. Uh, Empire Dark Salvation, uh, 2005, but it was first on Happiness in Darkness in 2008. I started playing around with more metal, uh, you know, some instrumental parts, and we had the gotten ourselves a great live drummer who is also from the black metal scene. He plays everything from jazz to black metal, so I also want to challenge him a bit. So on 2008 album, I started to make more instrumental parts and some breaks, you know, and some fast uh, double kick drumming and all that. And it has just uh, developed from there. So on our 2011 album, we started working with Neil Kernan, whom you probably Right, Doc, great, know. great producer, exactly. Yeah, and he also uh, did this album. So we've done two albums with him now, and... It's just getting more and more metal, basically, and, and more playful, too. So there are no boundaries. I don't know. It might be a little bit difficult to put us in a definite musical genre, maybe, because we, we do a lot of stuff. But um, especially the 2011 album, uh, Anima Inferno, was more metal, 
heavy, uh, louder guitars than before, and I think this one is even harder. So, but it, it's it's a logical development because, as I said, when I was alone, I started out with electronic music because I didn't have any musicians. But I come from metal scene. I mean, I grew up listening to, well, bands like Halloween, Coroner. Slayer, Metallic, of course, and Iron Maiden, but also like D side and you know all that. So nice, so a great mix in there. Now the lyrical concept of, of this album, my understanding is because you're a lawyer by day, obviously musician by night, and there's sort of that dichotomy of the two there. How do the two live and breathe together? And yeah. obviously you do it quite well, but this is my understanding is this sort of a story of what if your mind couldn't separate the two and it just became intermixed or something can you tell us a little bit about it yeah exactly and and i got the idea from uh, a lot of journalists have asked me for many years how can you combine those two in real life and i think it's it's quite okay to combine them because you you get some diversity in your life uh, you don't only you're not only sitting by a desk doing legal stuff or negotiating or i mean going to court is obviously fun i think but um it's it's great to to have music uh, combined, but I wanted to make a movie about what happens if everything goes to hell if it doesn't work out. So this is basically what happens uh, to the character, who is obviously me, but in a kind of fantasy world that I slowly just go totally insane because of all the pressure from work and stuff. And you know, people. Uh, when you hear utopia, you think of oh, the perfect society or the paradise. Um, but actually, the original uh, meaning of the Greek word is uh, obviously nothing. And um, I kind of play around with that. And I also play around with um, like nothing, like the world is totally dead. And I also play around with uh, the thought that why should my utopia be a perfect world like everyone else sees it? What is my perfect world? And it's obviously filled with horror and undead and witches and werewolves and all that. Now, going back to the beginning of it, we know what the concept is and everything, but was it one of those situations where you had the concept going in and you wrote the songs to tell the story? Or did you start writing songs and then that theme, that common thread seemed to be there and you thought, hey, let me put this together as an album? Yeah, because I remember in the early days, because a friend reminded me that um, I mean, a guitar player who's not uh, playing with me anymore, but we played together in the band for 20 years. And I was out the other day drinking beer with him, and he reminded me that in the old days, I always had like 20, 30 lyrics, and let's make a song from these lyrics. Um, but now it's the other way around. I write the music first, and then the lyrics comes afterwards. And normally, I really hate to write lyrics, actually, because you know, you have this idea, and you just uh, maybe record some some lines here and there, and then you know, I want to to put some sense to it. And then it was cool to really work with lyrics this time and try to make a concept album, because this is what you did in the old days. But not too many make concept albums anymore, because because of the digital uh, evolution or whatever you call it, uh, people now nowadays tend to just listen to one and one song. Right. I mean, the kids today, they just pick one song that they like and they don't listen to the whole album. So I thought, okay, if they just listen to one song now, they won't get the concept of the album. That's also something. So, But I just wanted to make a concept album. Um also because a lot of journalists ask, is this a concept album? No, it's not. They have three songs from before, maybe that uh, can make some story together, but I didn't make a full concept album before. So I wanted to challenge myself also with the lyrics uh, to write something that could be a story. So it kind of developed during the, the songwriting process, basically. Now, when did you get the idea, when putting this whole concept together as a record, when did you get the idea to actually spin this whole thing out and make a film from it? That would be, uh, I, I started working with uh, a guy called Daniel William Bones. He's a director, and he basically just done our music videos. The first, he, he did the, the two music videos for us on the third album, a song called Dark Side, and a song called Freak, and... We started talking uh, much more together and it seems like we have some, some kind of the same visions and he's very into horror. So this is how it started, I think, that we kind of developed some ideas together. 
by very long phone calls, you know, like two, three, four hours. <laughs> and uh, we talked a lot on the phone. I called him whenever I had an idea, and he also called me whenever he had an idea, and then it kind of grew from there. But it's it's basically from the idea of making a music video to each song on an album, then I thought maybe we should make a film instead and uh, include some uh, live concert in there because a lot of people have asked uh, for, for some live material from Gothmister. And then we want to do something a little bit more original that we had an intro movie. And the, the story in the movie kind of connects with the live version and then we have an outro movie. So you have some kind of frame around it. Right, so it's it's not so much, you know. And unfortunately, I wish I'd already seen it, so I, I'd have the answer to this question. No, no, no. It's, but so no. instead, it's not so much. It's a full blown movie. It's sort of a, a, a video chronicle of the album that's tied together with other story bits and live material. No, what happens in the movie is that um, it starts off with me as a lawyer coming out of the courthouse. Uh, I get some kind of stroke on the street, so I fall in the street. And it's a busy, you know, busy city, lots of traffic. And when I wake up, the city is dead, completely dead. So, uh, and I hear a lot of strange sounds and my mind's playing tricks on me. And then I see a little girl, can't see her face, but I follow her because I think she needs my help. But really, in, uh, the idea was that she's actually scared of me because I'm slowly turning into some evil, crazy guy. So I follow her into... Um, a building um, where I obviously get attacked by some creatures. There are military guards, and uh, I get dragged into the darkness. And you hear a lot of sounds, noises, and when I come out from the darkness, I have converted into this Gothminster character. So when we go on stage, this is kind of building up to the concert. And obviously, the concert is um, recorded at the Rockefeller Music Hall, which is a quite large venue in Oslo, and uh, everyone in the audience is a is zombie or undead like monsters. So we have several hundred people. We we contacted a local zombie walk. We contacted lots of other people who were interested in dressing themselves up as, yeah, whatever. Uh, basically like this zombie concept. And we had 15 makeup artists who helped them out if they didn't uh, put on good enough make makeup themselves. So they got this concert for free. We rented the venue for two days. And then we recorded with 18 different camera angles to make this happen. And during the show, um, there are a lot of effects. I, I don't want to reveal everything. But in the middle of the show, uh, the drummer is taking, because we have also some actors on stage now. So he's um, um, dragged off his drum chair by uh, ex execution zombie and, and some other creature and they kick him into a pit in front of the stage and then there will rise a huge animatronic demon holding him upside down in his legs and it goes like seven meters up in the air mm -hmm. and it has a wingspan also on seven meters wide so it shakes him up in the air and it goes down everything is silent and when he finally comes up again he's all bloody and he's turn into some undead creature and the, the crowd is cheering and they're trying to attack the stage. The military guards try to defend us and obviously uh, after a while we also turn into like zombies and in the end of course I drown in a crowd of zombies and then the outro movie starts. So everything has like a story in it even though it's a live concert, so... Nice. Very, very cool. I'm looking forward to checking it out. And, of course, the new album is phenomenal. Before we get out of here, a couple more quick questions. One, obviously, you've sort of told us your path to music and everything, but you're a lawyer You're a lawyer by day. What sort of drew you to doing law? I mean, obviously, there's the sense that uh, going to trial, being in a trial is sort of like being on stage itself and everything, but how, how did you first get drawn into law? Uh, well, both my mother and father, they, they're lawyers, and my mother's cousin is also a lawyer, but it's not so much because of them. I uh, I think that uh, there's something to do with... Um, uh, I like uh, the thought of justice, and um, even earlier, before before this uh, inspiration from horror movies and my friend with the metal, who was a metalhead and everything, I was... Uh, extremely into comics 
so I was drawing a lot of comics when I was little and I think by the age of eight or nine I had uh, created like 70 comic books and I started writing on six different books. So it's quite creative also before the musical period and I think my main uh, comic hero was Batman. And and he he's this kind of businessman at daytime and at night he fights uh, criminals and stuff. So maybe there's something there. Nice. So our last and always the pointless question of the week. If you could eliminate one current pop culture trend or person, who or what would it be? <laughs> eliminate one uh, pop culture trend or person. Hmm. Well... It may sound strange, but uh, maybe the way the goth culture <laughs> has developed, actually, because uh, originally uh, goth minister was a riot against the goth scene. It started like we, a friend invited me to a goth pub, and I thought, well, uh, they need a leader, don't they? Because they look so unhappy and so weak. <laughs> so... <laughs> So my friend said, yeah, we should invent something. And I thought, yeah, what about Gothmist? It was all just a joke. And it was like a 30 meters tall guy. And when I thought about Goth, I thought about the huge pompous cathedrals. I thought about the warriors, you know, right. who fought down the Roman Empire and all this horror. And then I saw how the Goth scene, this subculture had become. Like, it's very, very soft. So this is something I actually don't like so much. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, Goth Minister was a riot against the Goth scene. That was how it started. And only as a joke, but I don't care so much about that. I mean, anymore, but... There you go. Perfect way to bring it full circle. Bjorn Alexander Brim of Goth Minister, the Goth Minister himself, the new album Utopia and the film Utopia. Out. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. I'm hoping you guys will get a chance to come to the U.S. I know it's hard for a lot of bands in Europe to be able to do that, but we have the film at least. So thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. Thank you so much. I hope we will be back. We, we toured the U.S. in 2007, but we haven't been back since then, so I hope we'll be back soon.